Let's talk about some more ideas and techniques for integrating. Let's focus right now on the example integrating 1 over x. So there's a couple of really important things to understand. Let's start with y equal to natural log of x. <clears throat> Graph that function, and then what's the domain in the range? You might want to hit pause and do that first. All right, the natural log of x looks something like this. It's the inverse function of e to the x. So there's y equal ln of x. Now, what's the domain? The domain for this function is all real numbers greater than 0. So 0 to infinity, not including 0. The range, on the other hand, oops, is all real numbers. So y can take on any possible values. On the other hand, let's take a look at the graph of 1 over x. And then let's look at the domain and range for that. So the 1 over x graph looks something like this. y equal 1 over x. And so your domain is all real numbers except 0. And the range, the y values, same thing. All real numbers except y cannot equal 0. All right. Now, let's go ahead and find the integral of 1 over x. Now, we've learned that oops, the natural log, of, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So the integral of 1 over x should be the natural log of x, and then plus any constant. But there's a problem there. In the original problem here, we're given the function 1 over x, and x can be anything except 0. So x could actually be negative values. But the natural log of x only takes in positive values. So that's going to cause a problem. So what we need to do is have the natural log of the absolute value of x. So now any of the values of x in this original integral can be plugged into the antiderivative of 1 over x, which is the natural log. And with the absolute value sign, we can handle those negative values of x. So what we're saying is the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So if you look at slopes of tangent lines on this graph, we have really positive slopes, and then less positive, less positive, less positive, almost zero, but still positive. And that's the values that we're getting on this graph here. But we're not using this piece at all because we don't have any part of our graph over here where x takes on negative values. But on the other hand, when we're going from this graph to that graph, that's a different story. So we need to take into account this piece of the graph. And so by having this here, that's not going to work for this one. All right, so make sure you put absolute value around x when you're doing integral of 1 over x. Let's look at some other functions sine with integrals with sines and cosines. You might need to go back and look this up, but what are the double angle formulas for cosine of 2x and sine of 2x? Let's start with sine of 2x. That wound up being 2 sine of x times cosine of x. Come back to that shortly. For cosine of 2x, that was the cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. And then we actually had two other versions. If we replace that sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared, then this would become 2 cosine squared x minus 1. On the other hand, if we took that original equation and we replaced the cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared, then we'd get cosine of 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. So we have three different functions here, three different equations here for the cosine of 2x, and it depends on the problem which one might be more useful. Okay, now with that in mind, 
How do we do the integral of sine squared of x? Well, at first you might think, well, it should be one-third sine cubed of x plus c. But if I differentiate this, the derivative of one-third sine cubed, we do three times one-third and then subtract one from the exponent. But then we have the chain rule times the derivative of the sine function, which is the cosine function. And that's not what we started with. So that doesn't quite work. So we're going to run into difficulty here, unless we remember this version of the double angle formula for cosine of 2x. If the cosine of 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared, we can solve that equation for sine squared, and we'll replace that in here. So now what we really have, this integral is the same as the integral of, uh, if I switch that, move that, 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2. And if you want to split that into two fractions, the integral of 1 half is going to be 1 half x. And the integral of negative 1 half cosine of 2x, well, let's start with basics. It's something like the sine of 2x, but if I take the derivative of the sine of 2x, that's going to be cosine of 2x times 2, which will cancel my 1 half, and I don't want to do that, so I have to offset the chain rule part of that when I have to multiply times 2, and so I'm going to need another 1 half here, plus c. So I find my final answer is 1 half x minus 1 fourth sine of 2x plus any constant. And now I recommend go ahead and differentiate that just to make sure. And obviously the 1 half x becomes 1 half, but when you differentiate this, you're going to get cosine one, negative 1 fourth cosine of 2x times 2, and so 2 times a fourth is 1 half, and uh, the derivative of sine is cosine, so we get that there. And then the derivative of a constant is 0. One other one that deals with sine and cosine, and there's two different approaches to this one, my arrow. The integral of sine of x cosine x. Now, remember back up at the top when we had the double angle formula for sine of 2x? Notice that we've got a sine of x cosine x right there. So if I divide the 2 to the other side, sine x cosine x is really equal to sine of 2x over 2. So that would be one approach. This would become the integral of 1 half sine of 2x dx. And so the antiderivative for that is going to be, let's do this in a different color. So we have 1 half the cosine, but the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then the chain rule times 2x, we have to offset that times 2 with another 1 half. So final answer is going to be negative one-fourth cosine of 2x plus any constant. Let's double check by differentiating this. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so the negative times negative becomes positive. So negative sine of 2x times 2, 2 times a fourth is a half, and so I wind up with that. So that's one method. A different approach is to think of it this way. The, think of the cosine x dx as part of the chain rule when I do the derivative of sine to a power. So when I do this integral of sine of x times cosine of x dx, I'm thinking before it was sine to the first power, what if it was sine squared? Now when I take the derivative of this, the derivative of something squared, 2, that cancels the 1 half, sine to the first power, that's good, 
and then the chain rule times the derivative of sine, which would be cosine, and we have that built into our integral for us. So plus c. Now the question is, are these two answers equivalent? Does 1 half sine squared of x plus c equal negative 1 fourth cosine of 2x? And I think if you go back to the double angle formula for cosine of 2x and replace that with 1 minus 2 sine squared of x, you'll see that this is going to be equivalent to that. All right, let's wor work a few more examples. Let's do the integral for this. Now, forget about the 3x plus 2 for a minute. Let's just deal with something to the fourth. It's going to be 1 fifth something to the fifth. Now, when I take the derivative of this, <clears throat> the 5 times 1 fifth cancels and becomes 3x minus 2 to the fourth, but then I have times the chain rule, which is the derivative of 3x minus 2, which is a 3, just a constant. And with that, there's no problem dealing with the constants. I'll offset that times 3 from the chain rule with times 1 third in my answer. So my final answer is going to be 1 15th, 3x minus 2, to the fifth power plus c. Go ahead and differentiate that and see that you wind up with that. Okay, let's try another one. Let's do, that change color quickly. All right, let's do the integral of four over square root of one minus two x. Now, you may want to rewrite this first. That 4 is a constant, so you can move that out in front. And then 1 over the square root of 1 minus 2x is the same as 1 minus 2x to the negative 1 half power. So the basic part of my answer I know is going to be 1 minus 2x. And if I add 1 to the exponent, negative 1 half plus 1 gives me a positive 1 half. And I still had the 4 out in front here. But when I take the derivative of this, I have 1 half times 4. I want to offset that 1 half with a 2. And then the chain rule times what's on the inside. The derivative of the inside is a negative 2. So I'm going to want to offset that with a negative 1 half. So my final answer looks like it's going to be negative 4 times the square root of 1 minus 2x plus any constant or if you want to write it as to the one-half power, that's fine. So if you double check here and take the derivative of this, it's going to be one-half times negative four, one minus two x, subtract one, negative one-half, times the derivative of the inside, which is negative two. The one-half and the two cancel, the negative times the negative is a positive, and I wind up with four over the square root of one minus two x which indeed is what I started with. Okay, let's look at another one. How about the integral of 2e to the negative 3x? So the 2 is a constant. <clears throat> so e to the negative 3x, the derivative is e to the negative 3x, so the integral is e to the negative 3x. But now if I differentiate this, it's going to be 2e to the negative 3x and then the chain rule times the derivative of three, negative 3x, three which is negative 3. And I don't have a negative 3 to begin with, so I need to offset that with a negative 1 third. So now when I take the derivative, the chain rule will cancel that negative 1 third, plus any constant. So final answer, negative 2 thirds, e to the negative 3x plus c. Differentiate just to verify that you get what you started with which would be 2e to the negative 3x. All right, let's try one last one. How about 1 over 4x minus 1? So this takes on the general form of the integral of 1 over x, which we know is the natural log of the absolute value of x. So same idea here. So let's start with that. Natural log, absolute value of 4x minus 1 plus a constant. But now if I take the derivative of this, the derivative of the natural log of something is 1 over something, 
and then the chain rule times the derivative of the argument, which in this case would be 4. And I didn't have a 4 to begin with, so I'm going to need to offset that with times 1 fourth. And now I have my answer. 1 fourth natural log absolute value 4x minus 1.